150. Would everyone please stand? Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Yes. Praise him with the sultry and heart. Yes. Praise him in the tremble and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Yes. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything, everything. that has breath Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's now turn it over to our praise team. Good morning. If you're glad to be in the house this morning, give the Lord a great big hand for the praise. Tell the Lord, thank you for waking you up this morning. Thank for you for giving him, for him giving you your right mind. Amen. How many of you got a reason to praise the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together so we can praise the Lord this morning. Thank you. 
why don't you just turn to your neighbor and give them a little way to let them know that you're so glad that they're here in the house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the Lord some praise. Hallelujah, he's ready to be praised. Now we're going to take this time and just give God worship this morning. The song just simply says, will you give your heart and your soul to God? And will you say yes? So wherever you are, however you stand or sing, just worship him in your own way. Amen. Because God is good. He's a good God. Amen. He's a great God. Amen. And he's just that good. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah.
my heart this morning. I'm full. I'm full. I come to you this morning, saints of God, bringing you the intercessory prayer. So if you're able and capable of standing right where you are, God sees your heart. God knows your mind. God knows every inch, every hair on your head, from the tip to the bottom of your feet. So let us go to the God, to God, I want and only in prayer. Let us all bow. Oh, Heavenly Father. Whoa, Heavenly Father. My Creator. Oh, my God. What a wonderful, blessed day it is. I thank you, Lord. And I'm coming to you as humbly as I know how. As I know how. I want you to continue to bless each and every member that is represented here this morning. That have been on the line with Sunday School. And all of us who are wanting to be here but unable to be here. Bless the sick and shut in on heaven and Father. Bless our pastor, Pastor Barry. Continue blessing him and, and Pam. Continue strengthening them and their families, oh Heavenly Father. Continue blessing engineering pastor, Pastor Madison and Sister Madison. Continue bless Sister Sheila as she continue to bring us word on Sunday school and the word this morning. Oh Heavenly Father, I ask you to give us all strength, physically, mentally capable strength that we can continue to see succeed and what you have us to do, not what we have to do. Not what we want, but what you want, oh God. Continue to bless this day, oh Heavenly Father, each individually and collectively, oh Heavenly Father, as a whole, that we will continue to give you the honor, the growth, the glory, and the praise. I thank you, God, for all you have done for my family, for the same one family, for each and every one of us, oh Heavenly Father. And those who are weak and shut in, I ask you to give them strength this day, Lord, that they may continue to grow and continue to learn and understand your word, oh Heavenly Father. Continue to bless us, as I said, continue to bless us individually and collectively. And I ask you these blessings in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray and ask it all. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Kelly, Philip, and Jakim. 
She serves as the Galilee Griggs Memorial District of Baptist Church's GGMDA, First Vice President of the Women's Auxiliary Ministry. She serves as the GGMDA Chair Lady for Zone 1 under the leadership of Zone 1 Chair, the Honorable Dr. Ellen G. Madison II. She formerly served as the GGMDA District Matrons Chair under the leadership of the former Women's Auxiliary President, Sister Carolyn Thornton. She is honored and humbled to have served the Lord as a former Deaconess President for GGMDA Zone 1 Division. She is a former Deaconess President of the Dallas, Texas, Minis Dallas, Texas Missionary Baptist Convention Incorporated. She has been a member of St. Mark for 10 years. She's a Sunday school teacher, second vice president of the Deaconess Ministry, a GGMDA Youth Department Christian Education Coordinator and Instructor, a Missionary Society teacher and a matron instructor. She also serves on the board of the Christian Education Team of St. Mark, the St. Mark Leadership Team and the Drama Ministry. She is certified to teach in both the adult and youth divisions for the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. She is also a certified, she's also certified as an instructor with the Children's Evangelism Fellowship, CEF Ministries. She is a graduate of Dallas, Dallas Baptist University. She is a certified engineer. She received honors while earning her bachelor's degree and business administration and a minor in accounting. Her vocation encompassed environmental science, environmental compliance and reg regulation laws, engineering, governmental affairs and accounting for various energy industry corporations, including the Encore Electric, De Electric Delivery Company, the TXU Electric Company, the NSER Corporation and the Lone Star Gas Company. She is also an active Neighborhood manager, man, sorry, an active neighborhood citizen of the Redbird community. Her hobbies are studying the Bible, reading Christian novels, writing Christian plays, and traveling with her hubby Jimmy. Working jigsaw puzzles, gardening, and working and doing arts and crafts with her eight grandchildren and her seven great grandchildren. Praise the Lord. The next verse you will hear after the morning hymn, Sister Sula Ann Williams. How many of you know that God gets the highest praise of everything? Amen.
Can we give Sister Sheila a great big hand clap of praise? like to thank our Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, and our uh, Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. I just like to thank Him for His goodness and His mercy, which I didn't deserve. And just thank Him for St. Mark. St. Mark looks so beautiful this morning. I haven't been in in such a long time. And we just praise the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. And uh, uh, another thing, um, I'd like to give honor to Jehovah God in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And also to our newly bestowed Pastor Louis Emma Berry. <laughs> always call you Louis A. Big. So I apologize for that. And his ministerial staff, which includes my pastor emeritus, Dr. Ellen G. Madison II. And to you, my honorable brothers and sisters in Christ today, thank you. I'd like to acknowledge everyone here in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, today, our theme has been selected by our St. Mark's Women Ministry, and it is called LIFT. Yeah. And the acronym for that, just in case you're wondering, is Ladies in Faith Together. And the theme scripture is taken from Ephesians 2 and 10, right. and it says, For his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. That's a mouthful. Amen. Now this passage is talking about regeneration. It's talking about the new man. It's talking about your new identity. It's talking about good works, believers walks, value and purpose and more. And this powerful verse right here, it shows our interaction and our behavior of our good and free will, uh, the way we do things, especially good things, and the role God plays in this. Now, we all know that we need Christian faith together to stand against the wiles of the devil, yeah. which carries a broad matrix yes. and range of evil, oh, wicked, yes. deliberately deadly activities. Yes. And you can find it in Ephesians 6 and 11. It's a privilege and a pleasure to come before the Lord and you today, together, I like doing an Isaiah 1 and 18, which says, now, he say, now, let us come together and let us reason. Now, there's some more go to that verse, but I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Now, we need to reason today. We need to humbly come. I can humbly come before the Lord and you today. We have to humble ourselves. But I come today to humbly, boldly, to to notify, clarify, inspire, 
as far as to impart the word of God. All right? I want to recognize also our St. Mark's Women Ministry leaders, Sister Linda Gass, President. And Sister Dolly Webster, Secretary, we don't play that. And Sister Angela Young, the humble treasurer. Now, let's rock today. You know, when I was younger, I was a rocker. But a different kind. Today, we're going to rock with the rocker ages. Jesus Christ. Now for a moment, though, I'd like to do an Elijah 1 Kings 19 and 13 with you. When God asked Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing here? And you see, Elijah had a problem. Like we all do. Elijah thought it was a life and death problem, as we all do. When we have a problem, it's just us. Ain't nobody going through it but us. That's the way we think. But God told Elijah when he got through with it, I got over 7,000 men who, in right where you are, I just didn't have to tell you. You know, I'm a paraphrase a little bit. Funny. He said, they never bowed to kiss back. Now, things weren't going like Elijah thought. This woman that married their king, and uh, she was well known as witch. And you know her name, Jezebel. Things wasn't going right. And we live in a world with a lot of Jezebel spirits. They kill us. Now, Pastor Barry, just Tuesday night, you gave us a figure, statistics, and it's not even June yet, how it's been over 7,500 shootings. And, and you gave us another number for mass shootings. And the thing about it is that number has changed. Because mm -hmm. it's the same week last week, mm -hmm. three flower mound policemen got shot. Okay, and then uh, a man, a uh, deranged man, things didn't go the way he thought it should go. He killed how many? Nine people. Mm -hmm. And it's been more. So a lot of times we're like Elijah. We just don't think things are going our way. And Elijah got kind of out of his head and disoriented and said, you know what? God asked him two times what you're doing here. And then he started talking about, well, these people that you, he said, I done talked to them. I done told them what you told me to tell them. And I said what I, you told me. I did what you said do. And they have rejected me. And one of them was after the kid. So things just wasn't going his way the way he had planned it. And us, just like Elijah, sometimes things we use out, just don't go the way we planned it. Elijah, I mean, he even told God, this major prophet, just kill me. I'm gonna paraphrase. Just kill me, kill me. Cause ain't nobody worshiping you but a man. You know, sometimes when we're stressed up, or uh, we're so being attacked, you know, hellhounds on our feet. We think we the only one. But God let Elijah know like he letting us know today, his work still goes on. Now like, I, and it's going to go on. He knew Elijah needed some rest, like he know we do sometimes. He knew Elijah needed some to eat, some bread and water. He had an angel to come, and I've been told that was the first angel food cake, because he made some cake, he made him sleep <laughs> bread. Then he told him, you got to get up, because you got to go 40 days, right. you know. So he talks to us the same way. I hadn't planned either for my mother to be on a cane. I hadn't planned for my mother to suffer and die like she did. I hadn't planned for this professional woman to not even know who we were. You know, I hadn't planned for my brother to be murdered. I hadn't planned to be spit on. I hadn't planned to be discriminated against. But it happened. 
Yeah. And I felt like Elijah, I just wanted to go somewhere in a cave. The cave represented like shelter, safety, yeah, yeah. you know, just getting along, you know. That's what I wanted to do. But Ephesians 2 and 10 tells us today, we are his workmanship. Elijah was his workmanship. You are his workmanship. You know, and we were created in Christ unto good works. And he ordained this. And Jesus don't lie. God don't either, according to Titus 1 and 2. Now, we rocking now. Let's get rocking. Now, but God's work is still going on, and it's still going to continue to go on. It's been centuries since Elijah went on in the wheel, in the middle of the wheel, you know. And it's been a year since my mother been gone, you know, in April. But God's work is still going on. It's been years since Martin Luther King was assassinated for civil rights, but God's work is still going on. I've been called out of my name. I've been betrayed, you know, and uh, it's just a lot of hurt going on, you know, but the word of God is still going on. Okay. Now, the thing is, is regardless, even in times like these, we know, we need to know why we're here. Yeah. Just like God asked Elijah, why are you here, Elijah? You know, we need to know why you here, and along with that, it's very important to know what your identity is, who you are, and whose you are. Because if you think that you're not going to be attacked, if you think that somebody that's up under your influence and love is not going to be attacked, wake up now. Now, the St. Mark's Women Ministry invite you today to connect with us in Jesus Christ's name, focusing on the God's assigned good works. The lift, the lift, the lift, the ladies in faith together, they invite you. Also, Psalms 3 and 3 invites us. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Now, it says, now, Hebrews 11 and 1, I want to bring this in real quickly on your identity. Yeah. Before you can do in Ephesians 2 and 10, you don't have to identify yeah. with yeah. Christ. You have to identify with yourself. You have to know who you are. Right. When I was in grade school, people called me names. Yeah. You know, I had a, a, a light-skinned dad and a dark-skinned mom. Huh. And they both gone to glory. Yeah. And I took the color after my dad, after my mom. And when you go to school, they play color games, too. Yeah. But you have to know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my daddy taught me, he light skin, mm -hmm. and he uh, and he taught me who I was. Yes. And so you have to know your identity yes. when you did it with what you got to deal with as a Christian. Yes. And so Hebrews 11 and 1, where the roll call of the heroes of faith is found, yes. it describes faith as, it says, now. Not after a while, huh? but now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, according, uh, and, 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 and this is according to the Bible. Faith is believing God's goodness and believing that he rewards his people who seek after him. Now, we are created by God, created of God, and in God. Now, we are created for the purpose of action. Yeah. Genesis 1, 26 and through 28 tells us that. The action should uh, we should take is the action that God has in mind for us. Right. When he designed us and built us, we should pray for God's blessings, you all. Yeah. In it, and he wants us to do it. Yeah. And God's word aligns not only with his ways and word, but it aligns in the things that he has written for us to do. Yeah. Now, don't be misinformed or uh, get it twisted, as the as the youngsters say. We're not saved by good works. We're saved by faith in the birth, yes. the life, uh, the death, and the resurrection of yes. Jesus Christ yes. for our sins. Yes. Yes. Now, we're saved by his good works before we're called to do our, our own works. Now, Romans 3 and 26 says that. Now, I'd like to expound very briefly and touch on some of the highlights of today's theme scripture. Right. Five things that our theme passage bestows on us briefly. Number one, it starts out for. 
And this four comes as a result of what was stated. You have to read the whole chapter. Uh, uh, verses 8 and 9. It says, by, by grace you have saved, been saved through faith, and that it is not of you, we ourselves. It's a gift. Not by works so that no one can boast. Because you know we'll boast. We'll get to brag. That's my sister over there. She drives a Marcellus. And she lives in a $500,000 home. And I have three degrees. And um, I, uh, oh, don't you know me? I'm kid to the President of the United States. You know, this time. And I've been working for this company for 30 years. And I make six figures. All that type of stuff. And we are both in a minute. You know, I catch my grandkids and great grandkids boasting about just uh, what's those things, Legos that they make. So it's him. And it says the good works is about him and how he has told us to use it because that's what we've been saved for and that's what we've been saved by. And number two, we are God's workmanship. Yeah. And some versions of the Bible say handiwork which we've been made by God's own hand. Yeah. We didn't come from a monkey. Don't let nobody to they're teaching that, they're teaching that. I didn't come from a monkey and then I didn't crawl, crawl out the water and grow some legs. I didn't do that. And another thing I teach you too, but another thing I used to hate, and my son, he, uh, my oldest boy is an Omega man, but I used to, I remember when he was in college and he used to talk all that talking, dog, say dog, you know, and I'm like that. That used to just burn me up. And I, cause, you know, I wanted you to know that you didn't come from that. But sometimes he wanted to be an old mega man so bad, so he did what we do. I have done before you go along to get along, or you get along to go along, whatever way it goes. And he was doing both of it. But we don't need to say that things like that. We need to focus on what our identity is. Number three, it says, in Christ Jesus. This was a case of our creation. Christ was there at the beginning, and through him all things were made. And in him was life, and without life, not anything was made. It's John 1, uh, John 1, verses 1 through 4. Yeah. So we've been made new, you all. We were created anew, and we need to know what our new identity is. We are creations according to God, uh, uh, to the Word of God, and you can find it in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. This is accomplished. You can't do it on your own. This is accomplished only in Christ and his finished handiwork. Yeah. Now, this is what number four says, to do good works. Yeah. Okay, we don't just pray a prayer and wait to die so we can go to heaven. <laughs> we don't do that. We are saved for a purpose. You got something to do before you get to heaven. You got something to do before you die. And it's good works. And it has been predestined and ordained. Okay, so we have value. And we have value in the sight of the Lord. That's what this good works is about. And I love Psalms 116 and 15. I often use it for resolutions. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Yeah. Also, we got, uh, uh, what is it, Psalms 16 and 3, that says, but to the saints who are on this earth, and whom is all my delight. That's God talking. You got bad, you're precious in the sight of the Lord, and you delight the Lord. Now, this is something that helped build up our identity. This will help you when somebody give you a finger, and it's not this finger. You know, when you drive, and it excites roadway. If you ever been given a finger, tell I have. And I have just come from church. My two, my daughter sitting right there. My daughter was, uh, she was about this tall, and my, my oldest son, the, the, the baby boy, I hadn't even been thought about because he was born 20 years later. But uh, the, 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 the two I had then, they were little bit kids, I had them in the back seat, and they were going to this Starplex thing over there, and this lady, uh, uh, wherever she was, and uh, 
uh, she had her all spiked in different colors. She ran me off the road, and then she gave me a finger, but it wasn't this finger. Well, I was raised in Southeast Dallas. <laughs> and gave me that sign, I just uh, seemed like I started. And I told this to one of my adults, Clay, I actually started slop. And then I actually, that old woman was trying to resurrect herself. And I said, I used to ask people, do you want to fight me? You want to fight me? You know, because I was the oldest out of eight kids, and my dad told me, you better not let nobody mess with your brother. And he told my brother, you better not let nobody mess with your sister. You know, so I was kind of like, I wanted to, to give. But I had just come from praising the Lord. And that wasn't my purpose to cuss her back. That wasn't my person, pur purpose to see how you and I was saying to myself, you in my house. You over here inside of this house. I tell you, and it was coming. My neck was twisting and shaking. <laughs> In the, in the district, they wanted to know why pray. And we had the teachers had to scratch our head. We had to think about it. You pray because Jack, the, the word of God ain't God. He changes people and he changes your heart. And he does changes that we need. So, because I have a good work to do. I had to finish raising my children and go rather than go to jail and be incarcerated for hurting somebody or worse. And so God works, and we are His saints. Go back, I got off subject a little bit. Go back to our identity. It goes back to this verse, Ephesians 2 and 10. You got purpose. To have purpose, you got to have an identity, and you got to have an assignment. That's not my purpose. That wasn't my purpose. Yeah, I can do it. Don't you know Israel was a little bitty nation? But they were some powerful. They whooped. They whooped. They would, they would get out after they said their prayers to the Lord. They would get some instant whoop. And you know what they call that in wrestling. You know, whoop. And, and so Israel was like that. It is even stated that they had a, 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 what you call special forces of archers. They were all left-handed, and I'm left-handed too, bad. They were all left-handed, and they were sharp shooters. So Israel could not do some of the things they wanted to do, and when they did, they got punished for it. When they did, it wasn't God's purpose. They got punished and punished and punished. And so we don't want that. We're saved for a purpose. We were uh, uh, created to function and as uh, thinking, reasoning. Yeah. You got the reason for you jump and do some of these things. We're living beings pursuing life for the glory of God and doing his good works. He called us. And, uh, and we also have to spread the good news, God's good news, which is Jesus' new rule. And life more abundantly. Even in times you all like this, it's, 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 the, it's the guy pretty bad. But I remember I, was, I can't remember the poet's name, but he said this is the best of times and this is the worst of times. The reason why it's the best of times because Jesus Christ came and he has saved you. Yeah. Yeah. And every sin that we will ever commit has been nailed on that cross. Yeah. Now we have a new li now newfound liberty, but we have new purpose. Yeah. And we are supposed to stick to that purpose. Uh, one day to ask a question to my husband, uh, what was it, honey? She said, she asked you, since Jesus Christ uh, died, uh, why do we have to ask for forgiveness? And my husband told her, uh, because he says so. But that's the main reason right there. 
And some people you can't go no further with. You can't go and try to explain it because they're going to try to argue and debate with you. So I had to do that to my kids a lot of times. So when we grow a little bit more, we'll talk about this subject. But right now you're doing it because God says so. Oh, you're doing it because I said so. And I push you and so that's the way we have to look at it, because God says so. And he will, he, he got surely goodness and mercy, but he got retribution time for you. And like one of my grandmothers used to tell me, your arms ain't, ain't long enough to box with God. So you do it because you told to do it. Now, in, uh, very briefly, in Revelations chapters 2 and 3, we have been created to do a good works, but Revelations 2 and 3, read it, read it sometime. Uh, because Revelations 2 and 3, Jesus is talking to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And uh, that those churches, by the way, reflect every church that's operating and functioning under the name of Jesus Christ today. We can't criticize them because some of us in that too. Now, it says that Jesus continually warned the churches. I know your works. Now, we've been... Jesus Christ is talking in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Yeah, yeah. And this is Jesus who has created us to do good works. Like Lyft has uh, uh, directed us to. Now, I know your works. Jesus knew the works then, and he know our works now. Yeah. He know the good, the bad, yeah. the ugly, and the lukewarm. Oh, and yeah. Jesus Christ then and now searches the minds and hearts of mankind and deals with everyone according to their works. Well, I was, I want to sometimes go up and debate with love. You mean you know the works of Donald Trump? All right, all right. Well, you know, you, you mean you know the works of Idiot I me? Mean? Uh, well, you know the works of the people that murdered my, robbed and murdered my brother around Christmas time? You know, yeah, I know you too. I know your heart. I know you have seen and come short of the glory of God. He does know us. Now, Jesus knows our sincerity. He knows our hypocrisy. And he knows the quantity of errors in our work. Intentionally and unintentionally. How? Because he does. He knows. Now, that was number four. Number five, my final one, it says, which God has ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. Which God has ordained, that means called, selected, elected, appointed, that we should walk in them. And he's, this has been prepared, and it's been prepared for the good works of the saints. If you think you're not a saint, I've already given you Psalms, 116, 15, I've given you, this was, I believe it was, um, it was uh, Psalm 16, 3. Earthly saints, and you are one. I had to, uh, have been told by a deacon one time in Sunday school class, I'm not no saint, I ain't no saint. I say, yes, you are, according to the word of God. If you, if you believe part of the word, you have to believe all the word. You don't want to be called a saint because you want to have leverage to do what you want to do this other saint. But God, you have to go by what you are. You are a saint. And when the devil or the hellhounds come at you, you got to know you can't respond like that because your purpose is to do good work. Now, uh, you can't let those evil words come out your mouth and bless people too. Yeah. You can't cuss me out one minute uh -huh. and then say, hey baby, baby, mommy loves you, daddy loves you, you daddy grandbaby. You know, you can't do that, honey. Uh -huh. I'm telling my husband. You can't do that. No, you can't do that because you are an earthly saint. And earthly saints uh, uh, according to Acts 9 and 32, when Peter was talking, earthly saints are the disciples of Christ. And they are, they are uh, called saints in four times in the book of Acts. Part of your identity is that you are a saint. Now some of this unsaintly stuff we've been doing, we're going to have to correct ourselves with the Holy Ghost. 
Y'all calling the Holy Spirit, but I was, I, I keep telling you, I come from Southeast Dallas. I had to, I, it was the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Holy Spirit, Brother Reed. Uh -huh. You came from where I came. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, Revelation states that the Lord has preordained and predestined that we should not let it any licentious or lascivious okay. remember, doctrine uh. or that type of living and influence have any part or place in our lives. Yeah. Revelations 21 and 8 states that these actions, deeds, character, lifestyles are damned, right. demonic, and leads to sure destruction. Oh, yeah. So therefore, as lift, 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 Amen. lift, Amen. ladies in faith together, and that's Christian faith. We examine and evaluate ourselves according to the Word of God, by the Word of God, and for God. If you include and include the following actions, characteristics, beliefs, and good works of Jesus Christ in your daily lives, yeah. you too are lift, yeah. ladies in Christian faith together. And this is just a secret. I heard this. That next month is uh, the men going to have it. And I just heard that we got a gift coming next month. Whereas this is lift, ladies and faith together. I hear the men's got a gift coming. Gentlemen and faith together. I heard that. Now that's what I heard. That's what I heard. But if you conclude, include and conclude the following actions and characteristics every day in your lives, you too are lift. Now I'd like to leave you with these words. Lift. As I close now, ladies and faith together in our Christian works, we believe, we proceed, we achieve, we upreach, we enrich, we outreach. We praise the Lord here, there, and everywhere. We don't just trust. We must trust in Jesus. We're not shy. We testify. We present. We represent. And we lovingly invite. We don't back. Back. We intercede, we don't impede. We affect and we have good effects. We adopt, we adapt, and we become a dip. We influence, we confluence. We serve, we preserve, we observe, we concert. We recognize, we don't astronaut. We conclude, we include, we don't seclude. We do grow and keep the golden rule, though. But we don't quit pro quo. Okay? We make a positive difference in our good works of Christian stewardship. We must portray and convey our faith together. We must with our Christian ordination and predestination. Lifting up Christ. Go lift, go lift, go lift. Amen. Oh, oh. And I also, uh, uh, we have one of uh, our blessed ladies. She's a blessing to St. Mark, Sister Kathy Wright. She's going to pass out some of what I just uh, read to you about what the women of lift do. Thank you. to give someone a chance, whether you're in person or online, a chance to respond to the word today. Perhaps there is somebody here or online who's been not only convicted but convinced 
about your need for a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. Or perhaps you've been convicted to the point where you know him, been saved, but you really haven't been walking with him. And we want to give that individual a chance to respond. So as our musicians play, if you're here today and you would like to Respond to the word today. This is your opportunity. Now, if you are online and you you want to make it known to us your response to the word today, you can go to our website, which is stmartdallas.org, and you can respond down by connecting with us and give us a chance to connect with you. Thank you card here 
just the thoughtful things people do for us that make all the difference. Your thoughtfulness means so much to me. And I just want you to know I truly appreciate it. That's from Sister Lottie Jones. And then we have Brother Thomas Meadows. Y'all know Brother Thomas Meadows. He uh, is in the hospital right now. He's over at Methodist, over on, oh, yeah. off, the, off the freeway over here, Charlton Methodist. Oh, I'm sorry, Colorado. Colorado, over in Colorado. He's in the Shekel Tower, room Shekel Tower, Shekel Tower, room 6012, room 6012. And he is really needing our prayer, St. Mark. He's really needing our prayers. He's really suffering with some things, some condition. And so he's fighting right now. And we want to keep him in prayer. His phone number for those who would like to call him is going to be area code 214-947-6099. 214-947-6099. And he can have visitors, but only two at a time. But you really have to call me in first to set that up before they'll let you in. But let's keep Brother Thomas Meadows in our prayers. And we have a graduate in the house today, St. Mark. A graduate in the house today, Katora D. McKinney. She is graduated on, she's graduated June the 5th, am I correct? June the 5th, and she's graduating from Pote High School. That's in Mesquite, am I right? I think that's my son's alma mater. Let's give it up again for us. She is our class of 2021. And so we're excited about another graduate coming out of St. Mark. And this is just one milestone, Katora, that we're celebrating. This is just one. And the reason why when you have a graduating ceremony, they call it commencement, is because you're commencing, you're starting, you're beginning something anew. And so we're looking forward to some other milestones down the road that we can celebrate with you. Congratulations. Okay. Brother Hal Pastor and Sister Madison in the house today. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. See so many faces. So many faces today. God is good, isn't he? I think y'all need y'all a hand clap. We, we had family and this weekend we were partially hosting some of the guests who was here. We had a great niece who graduated as well from high school in DeSoto. And so a lot of people descended upon Dallas DeSoto this past weekend, this weekend I should say. And my brother-in-law, his wife and grandson, they were staying with us. And we were just talking yesterday about the effects of the COVID, this pandemic, yeah. in particular on the local church. And I didn't know this, but he was sharing with me that over 100,000 local churches have closed their doors and are not looking to open back up. That's what he shared with me on yesterday. And I was just thinking, I said, wow, St. Marcus doors are still open. St. Mark doors are still open and have been come next week for a year. I think we have to Now we have churches that's 20 times the size of this church. Come on now. Come on now. Who's still trying to open their doors. But God has been so good and kind to us. To where we were able to pivot and pivot real quick. We were only down for two months. We were only down for two months. 
but God has allowed us to not only come back, but keep the doors open. 118 years later. That tells me God is not through with us yet. So we thank God for, for that. Now, now we want to, before we belabor the, the time, we want to afford those of you an opportunity to give. If this is your Sunday to give, you know, we, we say maybe the reason why on occasion we have Fifth Sunday is because it gives us a chance to catch up on our giving. So maybe this is your Fifth Sunday to catch up on your first or second or third or fourth Sunday that you may have missed out on. We got brothers who are, have positioned themselves. They're going to come and help to receive from you your offering. So as they come, please, please give. Brother Walker, good to see you, man. man. Good to see you. As our musician to give us some, play some giving music, and we'll be ready to go. Worshiping with you all and get in the word on today. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank God. And before we give a gift, I just want to ask my grandson, Julia, to please raise your hand. Everybody say, hey, Julia. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sister Sheila, can you please stand and come forward? All the ladies of St. Mark, can you please stand and let's give this lady a great big hand clap of praise. You can stand right there, Sister Sheila. We just want to thank God for you uh, being obedient and uh, thank you for the invitation on today. We can't give you much, but this is a small token of our love and also instead of a gift uh, presentation, well, instead of a gift bag, we want to give you a gift box. And it's some good stuff in that box, okay? So we just want to thank God for you and thank God for just giving us a rich word today and just continue to be blessed. So thank you so much. Amen. Bless you. I'd just like to say thank you, uh, Pastor Mary and our nurse, Pastor, that you all, Rev. Master, Dr. Master, that you all let me just share with you this morning. And I hope I didn't get too rambunctious. <laughs> but uh, I just thank the Lord for He gave some of us to be commissioned to. So He gave us the gift of humor. I love you. I'm glad to be back. But I thank you so much. I thank uh, my family for being here, my goddaughter. I thank uh uh where is Sister Gloria Walk? There she is. Thank you. There she be. And uh just I, I don't like the town name because everybody had that must have a godson over there, brother young. I just I'm just so glad to have to be back. My goddaughters, our soul, Katora, and Siam, praise the Lord. Amen. And everybody else, you know, I, they, uh, Real Master, giving me the eye. Like, they the <laughs> So, I better get out of here. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Sister Wendy, we just thank you for being yourself today. Also, Sunday School books for Sunday School teachers, students, the Sunday School books are in, so get to Brother McDonald after church. And to all of our guests, thank you for coming. Please come again at the opportunity to present this here. Yes.
peaceful folly, and to present two faultless before his presence with exceeding glory. To only rise, Savior be majesty, dominion, and power, his now and forevermore. Be blessed, Senator Martin. And happy Memorial Day.